Okay, we're going to go over the properties of a rhombus and a square today. So make sure you have your note packet out and turn to the page that talks that goes over the, the properties of a rhombus. This would be right after we did our rectangles last class. So let's go over the properties of a rhombus. So a rhombus is also a parallelogram. So all those properties we had for parallelograms, they still occur. But also it has the fact that a rhombus has four congruent sides. And that's the definition of it. So that means all four sides are congruent. So this side, this side, this side, and this are all equal to each other. Now, one other thing that it has is that the diagonals are perpendicular. So that means we have four 90 degree angles. One here, 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 and then down here. So we have four right triangles. The other thing that a rhombus does is the diagonals bisect the angles. All right. So this angle here is also the same as this angle. And remember since it's a parallelogram opposite side, opposite angles are equal, so it does the same thing over here. On the other side, this angle and this angle are also equal as well as these two. So if you look at these four triangles, the cool thing about it is that all four of the triangles are congruent. So if we just use one of those triangles, we're going to be able to find everything else. So if we find the parts of one triangle, it gives us all the other triangles as well. All right, so let's go on to our example. Let's move on to our example. Now this so flip your page, and this should be at the top of your next page, where I have that ABCD is a rhombus, A to B is 32. So let's write that in. That's a really bad three, so let's do 32. And angle ABE, this angle in here is 60 degrees. So that means that all of these sides are 32 and this angle here is 60, these are 60, and so forth. Because the diagonals are perpendicular, means I have a right angle in here, which leaves the remaining angles to be 30 degrees each using triangle sum. Alright, so I'm going to just take one of these triangles. Okay. Let's see this one right here. And I'm just going to draw it here. So I have A, B, and E, where this is 32, this is 60, and this one is 30. Now, you should recognize the fact that this is one of our special triangles. So, the pattern for our special triangles is like this. So, if I have 60 degrees here and 30 here, this small side is x, this is 2x, and x root 3. So, we are going to be using those measurements. Match up your sides to so the 32 matches up to the 2x, solve for x, so we're going to divide by 2, and I get 16 is equal to x. So that means a, from b to e is 16, and the other side is 16 root 3. Okay, well, 
because I know that tri all the measurements of that triangle, that's also the same for all the other triangles. So we can actually fill in our information. So A to D is 32. Angle BCE. So angle BCE goes from B to C to E, so that's 30. C to D is also 32. A to C, well if I look at that triangle that I had, this right in here is 16 root 3. Well this side is also 16 root 3. So together, they're going to be 32 root 3. B to E is 16. B, C, D, that's the big angle there, so that's 30 plus 30, which makes it to be 60. A, E, D will be 90, and B to D will be 16 plus 16, which is 32. Now, many of your rhombus uh, parallel or your rhombus examples or problems are going to be special triangles, and so you're going to need to simplify those square roots. Okay. All right, let's move on to squares. Now, a square is a rhombus because it has four equal sides. And it also has four equal angles, and those are four right angles. So a square is actually a rhombus, and it's also a rectangle. So just like with a rhombus, one of the triangles is all we need to find. Now the cool thing is, is the fact that in every square, these four triangles are exactly the same. This is our 90 degree. The angles are bisected, so this is 90, half of 90 is 45, and this side over here is 45. So what we're going to have is one of our 45, 45, 90 triangles. And this is for every single square. They're all exactly the same. Just that side length is going to change. So I'm going to label this as A, B, C. Now it tells me in our, in our problem that A to B is 6, so this is 6. So let's find all the missing parts to our triangle. So if I remember our pattern, this is 45, this was x, x and x root 2. Set the 6 equal to the x root 2. Divide by the square root of 2. Now you could leave it right there, because the square root of 2's are going to divide out, and leave it as 6 over the square root of 2, but I'm going to simplify it, because I don't like leaving that square root down there. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 2. Remember, we could do this. It gives us a fraction of 1, and that gives me 6 square root of 2 over the square root of 4. Well, that's 6 square root of 2 over the square root of 4 is 2. Reduce... 6 and the 2 here, and you get 3 root 2. So that means this side is 3 root 2, and this one is 3 root 2. Well, now, I'm going to put it over here on our triangle, 3 square root of 2, 3 square root of 2. Now we have everything to fill in the parts. So angle A, excuse me, B, A, E is 45. B to C, is 6, because all the sides are equal, so this side is 6. D to C, that's also 6. D to B, we we'll already have one of these marked as 3 root 2, the other one is also 3 root 2. Add 3 and 3 together, you get 6 root 2. Angle A, E, B is down in the middle, so that's a 90 degree angle. And D to E is 3 root 2. Squares are very quick, and there's not a lot to them. And they're all found exactly the same way. It just depends upon which side is given to you, whether you're going to have a lot of square roots or not. All right, so now it's time for you to start your assignment. Um, make sure you get the worksheet, too. Start working through it, and I will, if you have any questions, wait till I come back next class.